اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم From now on, we are going to focus on how to evaluate structural model. Now, we know that in structural equation modeling, a particular model is assessed in two stages. The first stage, we assess the measurement model, whereby we assess the reliability and validity. In short, the quality criteria of the constructs. In stage two, we are interested in assessing the hypothesized relationship whether those relationships are supported or not. Now that we have assessed the quality criteria for this particular model, that is, we have assessed the factor loadings, indicator reliability, we have assessed the composite reliability, construct reliability, we have assessed the construct reliability based on alpha and composite reliability, and then we assessed the construct validity through convergent validity and discriminant validity. We assessed both the lower order constructs and then the higher order constructs. Now that was the outer model, this one here. Now the next step is to assess how these variables in this study are related with each other. How internal marketing is related to the mediators and how the mediators are related to the dependent variable. Are these two variables moderating the relationship? And are these mediating the relationship between internal marketing and organizational performance? To do so, we need to move towards a structural model assessment. There are going to be detailed sessions on structural model assessment, but we are going to start off with very basic concepts. We are going to do some simple structural models, then a very simple mediation and moderation analysis. Just to give a clear idea as to what these techniques mean and how to interpret the output before we move on to our complex model. Let's start with a basic introduction of structural model assessment. Once you have confirmed that the measurement of constructs is reliable and valid, that is your measurement model assessment, the next step addresses the assessment of structural model results. Now the figure here. This one here shows a systematic approach to the structural model assessment that we are going to follow. Now in the first step, you assess the collinearity. The reason is that the estimation of path coefficients in the structural models is based on ordinary least squares OLS regressions for each endogenous construct on its corresponding predictor constructs. Now the path coefficients might be biased if the estimation involves high level of collinearity. So it's better to check the collinearity diagnostics. Now once you have ensured collinearity and that collinearity is not an issue or problem, you will evaluate the significance and relevance of the structural model relationship that is the hypothesis that you have proposed. And then we move on to assess the explanatory and predictive power. For this particular session, that is the introduction of structural model assess assessment, I'm just going to stick to these, step one and step two. And yes, we are going to discuss all these steps in detail. Evaluating structural model, step one, assessing the multicollinearity. The structural model regressions must be examined for potential collinearity issues. Now this process is like assessing formative measurement model as we have done before, but in this case, the construct scores of the predictor constructs in each regression in the structural model are used to calculate the variance inflation factor. We do not need to get into detail as to how they are calculated. We just need to look into the variance inflation factor. VIF values above five are indicative of probable collinearity issues that need to be solved. So normally they should be Preferred is obviously below 3, but even if they are less than 5, that is fine. So what happens if you have got collinearity issues? If collinearity is a problem, a frequently used option is to create higher order constructs. So how do we assess collinearity in Smart PLS? And let's develop a very basic model and go with the collinearity diagnostics. Now this is the model, uh, the measurement model that we have assessed up till now. 
let's uh, do a very basic model here i've got one let's add one more variable for now just for the sake of understanding let's drag and drop let's name it oc here connect let me connect it here go to calculate let's do bootstrapping this is where you assess the significance of your hypothesized relationship you have to run bootstrapping while assessing measurement model we used primarily the pls scm algorithm so we are going to use bootstrapping we are going to talk about what is bootstrapping but later so for now let's leave it to default and then start calculation now here are our results look at this beta coefficient 0 0.300 your p-values your p-values now both relationships are significant what do we mean by significant relationship now here since i'm assessing the relationship between latent variables here my interest is assessing whether cc has got a significant impact on op and whether oc has got a significant impact on op now how do we, I assess the significance of relationship? Now if something is to be accepted that is your hypothesis, it has to have a certain criteria. So what's the criteria here? How do I accept hypothesis or reject my hypothesis? In this case, look at this p-value, 0 0.000. This is less than 0 0.05. Look at this, less than 0 0.05. Now this shows that there is a significant impact of CC on OP. There is a significant impact of C OC on OP. So let's say this was the model that I was interested in testing. And I proposed two hypotheses. That is, one, there is a significantly positive impact of CC on OP. And my hypothesis two, there is a significantly positive impact of OC on OP. Are my hypotheses accepted? Yes, my hypotheses are supported. Why? Because the p-value here is less than 0.05. Now again, what are these? These are your indicators and why these are zero? Look at this, zero, because your outer model is only showing p-values. So this is the p-value for each of the indicators and this shows that these indicators are significantly reflecting the underlying construct. You can change it here, look at this. So you've got loadings and your p-values, loadings and p-values. Now this is the graphical output, you want to export it, right click, export as image, clipboard or file. Now let's go to report. And in the report, the first thing that you will see are the path coefficients. That is, each of the relationship explained in terms of its results. Now CC to OP, this was one relationship proposed, original sample. Now this is sample mean based on bootstrap results standard deviation now if you divide this standard deviation by original sample you will get this t statistic and this t statistics in this case if your t statistics is greater than 1.96 then you can say yes this particular relationship is significant and this is obviously complemented by the p values less than 0 0.05 your hypothesis is accepted or supported and you reject your null hypothesis same is the case with OC and OP, original sample 0.439, based on bootstrapping, your sample mean, your standard deviation, if you divide 0.439 by 0 0.064, you will get this value here, and these are your p-values here for both the relationship, and both the relationships are significant. So this is how you can test your basic hypothesis using Smart PLS 4. In the next session, I'm going to focus on basic mediation analysis, followed by simple moderation analysis in Smart PLS4. And then we are going to move towards our original model and do some complex analysis based on this particular model. Thank you very much.